Welcome back to the channel. We are going to be replacing the seals in this motor. I've never done this before, so hopefully you can learn something from it. I took this apart a while ago, so I don't really remember much about it, but we're gonna figure it out together. I wonder what's happening under this side. I really have no clue. Maybe I should Google this. I should probably Google this. Question is, do I have to split the case? See wrench that goes. So yeah, I gotta zip off this crank nugget here. And then there's the seal retainer there. And then if there's, is there not one on the other side? How does that work? Is there no seal on the other side? All right, it's a new day. And yes, I slept in these clothes. I have come to the conclusion that I am just gonna split the case, take it all the way apart, and uh, we'll see where we stop. Here we go. 30 millimeter, nice. Okay, this will work. Hey, it's me, Ryan. Just the Microsoft paperclip version. So to prevent the crankshaft from turning, I've hooked the piston onto the case. I just made sure the piston's not resting on any of the gasket surfaces because that could potentially ruin the seal. Okay, now we're, we're at the seal here. That was a satisfying sound. Okay, this is the seal retainer. My thought process was I'll just split the case, right? And then that'll come out and I'll be able to just push it out from the other side, but there's a bearing there. There's gonna be a bearing there. Well, one thing I did wanna see is what does the seal look like on the other side and how do I have to take that out? So let's take a look ski. On the magneto side. Or whatever this is in here. Look at that, I got another one. Best case. Something might be worth mentioning here is that later I find out you do not have to split the case to put the crank seals in. Uh, so if you are working on this motor in your bike, you can probably even just leave it in the bike. Delicious rust coffee. Mmm. So, uh, and this is rusty, it's all frig. I gotta figure out how to pull that out. No, it's too tight. Too tight. I have these two pullers, but they are not the right kind. I need one, a puller that has an external thread so I can thread it into this part. I also have these little baby pullers. Even these don't fit. Come on. $16. Flywheel puller, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. 25.98 plus the depth of the thread, so it's probably 27. That looks like what I want. All right, I'm gonna go with the $30 kit so this doesn't happen again. The $30 kit I got was a variety of pullers, but if you're looking for the specific puller for this bike, it was the M27 XP1L. I'll put a link to the kit I got and also a specific puller if you just wanna look for the one for this bike. All right, so I ordered the puller for that, so we'll come back to that. Anyway. On this side. Hey. So that is a sealed bearing. Oh, let's just. Yeah, and that seal looks kind of grumpy and sad, but I guess it would make sense that there wouldn't be a seal here because the oil's just flowing through because I think this is all full of oil. Pop 
Pop this off. Don't forget there's a little washer there. And there's one on the other side too. Now it looks like we're ready to undo all the case bolts and get to splitting. I think we'll be able to pull it apart with this still on there. I just won't be able to get to the seal with it on there. So I'm gonna pull it apart and we'll see what happens after that. The question is, is there one underneath the flywheel here? I'm pretty sure there's not. I always wonder if it'll just do a little Probably not. So here I'm installing the crank puller. Basically this tool presses down on the crankshaft to pull the case apart. The reason you have to do that is because the bearing is pressed on the crankshaft pretty tight, but you don't want to use any other type of leverage where you're prying on the case or hammering it because you run the risk of bending the crankshaft, which will open up a whole mess of other problems. So it's important to press down on the shaft directly and pull up on the case, which is what the case splitting tool is for, and I'll put a link for that in the description. Ouch. Push the crank out, pull the case up. Oh! Cracked the case. I mean, in a good way. Loosened it. And we're just not sliding along the transmission shaft the way we want to, so. Let's give it a little teety tap. Hey, look at that. Okay, the camera stopped recording, but as you can see, the case came apart. The only reason that I was having any issue at all is because this little star has to squeeze through these notches. So the little points of the star have to fit in these little divots here as it's coming back through. Uh, so once I got the points lined up, these points lined up with those divots, it just came right off. So that was cool. So it's gonna be the same case. There's gonna be a bearing on the other side under the flywheel, and there's gonna be a seal on the other side of the bearing. So it's not like you don't have to split the case. You don't have to split the case to get the crank seals out. So could have Googled that, but you know, here we are and you saw it and you live and learn, so. All right, so at this point, it's been several months this motor's been sitting on my workbench and you can see here that I am using a flathead screwdriver to pry the seal out and I'm being really careful not to mar any of the machine surfaces with the screwdriver. These blue things are from a sealed driver kit that I bought that turned out to be pretty helpful, but it did come with a seal puller that I was hoping to use that turned out to be completely useless. So I'll put a link to the kit that I bought, but just know that if you're trying to use the seal puller, it's probably not gonna work, but the drivers helped a lot.
Okay, this is the little flywheel puller that I bought earlier. When you pull the flywheel off, there's gonna be a little half moon key in the shaft. Just keep track of that. Mine stayed in the shaft the whole time, so I didn't have to move it. Might be useful to mark where these screws are or at least pay attention to the witness marks. When you reinstall it, you want it to go pretty close if not exactly right back in the same place because this plate is going to be used to adjust your timing. You're probably gonna have to mess with it one way or another, but try to get it close so the motor will at least run when you try to start it back up. Okay, here I'm putting a screw into the seal to have something to pull on. Got to be really careful here because there is a main bearing right behind the seal. You don't want to damage it or get any shavings in there because when that goes bad, everything goes bad. It's very scary. <laughs> A little heat here helps to loosen things up and I put a little oil around the seal so that helps the oil seep into the cracks a little better. And these extensions here are more pieces from the seal driver kit that I got, which is pretty helpful. I'm sure in most shops you can find something to use for this, but it was just nice because I can use this in almost every situation. So that was helpful. And there you have it. The seals are installed. Soon I'll be boring out the cylinder, replacing the piston and reassembling everything so we can put this 48 horsepower motor on my go-kart. So if that's interesting to you, hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching. I will see you later. <laughs>